Well, hello. Welcome back if you are joining me for the second time. Apologies, first of all, that my first video was so shoddy. I didn't know what I was doing, probably still don't. And that's probably blatantly obvious, to be honest. Um, today, I thought I'd show you a little bit about the farm, show you around the farm, because it's probably a question I get asked the most. Um, in case you're just joining, hello, I'm Amy, the dairy daughter on Instagram. Um, I am a fifth generation dairy farmer, Leicestershire, and this is our farm. Um, we are all spring calving, so we're due to start on the 1st of February. Although you may see in this video that we've had a few early little arrivals. Um, we are running a New Zealand style grass based system. So although the cows are inside at the minute because the weather is horrible and it's cold, they spend most of the year grazing outside and we try and get um, make the most of the grass that we've got basically. Um, they're grazed on a rotational system, so they move to a new paddock every 12 hours and I measure the grass every week to decide where they're going to go next. Hopefully I'll get around to showing you that when we get there, but at the minute it's just dry cows and imminent arrivals basically. So the hub of everything I guess at the minute is the cow shed. Um, obviously they're all inside because the weather is dreadful. We've had quite a lot of rain, <sighs> typical. So yeah, cow sheds, part of the winter really. These sheds are used from November to February when the cows are inside and then that's it. They're empty for the rest of the year basically. Um, we hope to turn the cows out around Valentine's Day and then they come in around bonfire night. So yeah, depends on the weather, depends on the ground conditions. We have quite heavy soil here, which means obviously heavy cows have quite an impact. So we do have to think about that and affecting the soil. But for now, they're happy in here. As you can see, they're getting fed some silage, which they're loving. This is basically grass, which we grew in the early summer, cut it and kept it under a big bin bag sheet, basically. And now it's sweet smelling and lovely for them to eat. Okay, so next up, the parlors. Now this is probably what I get asked about the most on Instagram. Why do we have two parlors? So if you're not a dairy farmer or if you're not a farmer at all, then this won't mean anything to you, but this and this are identical 2448 Waikato parlors. Now that just means that you can fit 24 cows down each side. So the idea is that the person milking stands on the floor in the pit there and the cows stand at the top. They get fed while they're in here and yeah, you can have 24 each side. So we were milking at 24.48 for about 15 years. No problems whatsoever. We loved it. That was the old one. Literally no problems. However, milking was taking four and a half hours, four hours. Um, we were milking 450 cows through one parlor. And yeah, it was just taking too long. So we decided we needed to change something. So we thought, what can we do? So a lot of people say, why didn't you just make this parlor longer? So I'll try and show you. The reason we can't make this parlor longer is because in front of me, there's a road. And behind me, there is a slurry lagoon. So essentially the building is the building. You can't make it any longer than it is. So the parlor is the parlor. So then people were like, well, why didn't you just put a rotary in? We didn't really want to build a new building, spend all the money putting a brand new rotary parlor in. And we just thought there's got to be another option. So this was our other option. The building already fit a second parlor in. So perfect in that sense. We milked with one person in each and the cows can just go through one collecting yard 
They can choose which parlor they go in. They can go in the same parlor every day if they want, or they can go in a different parlor. It's completely up to them. So as we're doing a farm tour, I thought it would only be right to show you guys the calf pens. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that we've got some new calf sheds being built at the minute, not quite finished. So at the minute, I'm in our TLC pen. This is for our tiny babies when they're born, premature. As you can hear, they want the milk. These little lights are for heat. So we've got two babies under here at the minute. And that's all we've got. So obviously we're not due to start carving until February the 1st. So things are very quiet for now, but I just thought I'd show you while I was here. Nancy, who was our month premature heifer calf, has been drinking really well on the bottle. Um, so I've got some warm milk here for her. I'm just gonna check the temperature of it. Yeah. And then I'm gonna try her out on the bigger feeder to see how she gets on because at the end of the day she needs to get a bit more independent and I can't feed her with this forever especially when she starts having some friends so we'll see how it goes. So hopefully from here I can show you the parlour which is there so the cows just basically wander around here at their leisure they can eat, they can go lie down, but then also they're ready to go into the parlor, which is just there. And as I say, they can choose which parlor they want to go in. Thanks for that. Um, now, I know they say you shouldn't have favorites because, you know, not fair and everything, but I do have a favorite. And I just found her wandering around. This is Stella, 595, and she, is my number one cow. Oh, and she clearly wants a bit of attention. Hey, still. Look at her. So while I'm stood here talking to you guys, I thought I'd probably just go through some of the common questions I get asked. Um, one is what type of cow do we have? So traditionally, my granddad farmed here with very big Holstein cows. They would have been probably 650 kilos plus. That was great, um, high yielding cows, but it didn't really suit the grazing system. Uh, it doesn't suit the soil we've got here. So we've changed things around a bit and we are now heading towards a very Frisian cow, black and white, a lot smaller, tend to be 500 to 550 kilos. Um, better for the soil, better on their feet. And yeah, we like them. Um, good temperament and everything. A, a question I get asked a lot is about this shed. So it's a little bit dark, but I'll spin you around and show you. But people always say, why did you go for this style shed, which is kennels instead of a steel shed? And the answer is really that we know it works. We have this style shed on the farm already. They're 40 plus years old. They've been here for a lot of my dad's life and they are sturdy, they are reliable and they've withstood weather and time. So we thought, you know, if it ain't broke, that kind of thing. So we had a look at steel sheds and we had a look at these sheds. Price point was good, airflow is incredible and we think it fits what we've got going on here. So as you can see, there's a panel along the top there which helps the airflow really nicely. And also, if you can see, there is a there are holes at the top of the roof, which means air can come in and out easily. So even on a warm day, it doesn't feel hot in here um, because that wouldn't be very good for the cows, but also it keeps them sheltered. Um, Work-wise, it's easy because we can just drive along here, drop their food, they can eat, but then they can go into their bed section as well if they fancy it. I've shown you where the cows get milked, where the cows eat, where they sleep, where they wander around, everything basically, apart from where they have their calves. Now, it's pretty dark in here because it's getting dark, but hopefully you can see they're on straw beds 
and they're just wandering around or lying down maybe thinking about having a calf sometime soon um, most of them aren't due for another one to two weeks but we've just bought them in here because we think they look the closest to calving and obviously we want them to be near the house to keep a close eye on now to be honest that's most of it if you do want to see something in particular let me know either on here or on instagram i am open to showing you guys obviously it will be good to show you a bit more about calving as and when it fully kicks in i reckon it's going to be another two weeks until we've got lots of calves on the ground but really looking forward to it now because i feel like it's been a long build up and we can't go out and socialize so might as well look after some babies hope you've enjoyed the little farm tour um i'll try and keep recording these videos if you want to see more but if not i'm over on instagram at the dairy daughter so follow along and hopefully we can all learn off each other